Well, going into a game where the Silver and Black had really every excuse not to come out with the W, they did the complete opposite of that. Handling business, taking down the Cleveland Browns 20-16 to at Allegiant Stadium. Eddie Pascal here in the fifth quarter with my man DJ Duffel, Bryce Butler. And Duffel, man, okay, let's let's I want to start here, right? I kind of just want like the player's perspective on like a big picture thing before we kind of dive into what we saw this afternoon. Last Sunday, bad, no good. I mean, we heard from AP, we we heard from the players in that locker room, like you know, shell shocked, not acceptable, the whole deal, right? Whatever word you want to use. Not good. Move in, and then we kind of flip the script to today. We turn the page. Raiders come out down 10-0 in the first quarter. And it felt like, Bryce, like there was a moment there, down 10 nothing, on the heels of last week, where there's kind of that sense of, oh, here we go again. Like, how important is it, or how what important was it, for the silver and black to kind of buck that, and, and to say, to kind of see that moment being down 10 nothing and storm back the way that they did? Man, Eddie, that's a great question. I think the biggest thing is you have to look at the heart of the team um, and the character and the grit that, you know, that they're putting in during the weeks of practice. So obviously we've gone through training camp. We played a couple games, you know, we played Baltimore Ravens fantastically. We beat them, come back, win uh, last week. Obviously I, the way I look at it as a player is like, that was a trap game. Mm. You know, we beat, we, we beat the Baltimore Ravens. We have a comeback win. And then we play against the Panthers who have been looking very bad for the last year and a half, or at least you could say since the Bryce Young era. Right. And, you know, you go into that game thinking like these dudes won't score more than three or six points. You just kind of go in there thinking like this is an easy win. So the whole week as a player, you might be a little bit relaxed, like they're not going to beat us. Whoop -de -whoop -whoop -de -whoop. Then, you know, we get the news that uh, Andy Dalton gets to start. And then as a fan that used to play or as a player, you should start saying, hey, Andy Dalton is an experienced quarterback. He's probably a starter still in this league. Maybe their team can look different and they go out there and get shot. Fast forward to today, you know, we play the Browns. You know, obviously we got a bus kick last week. Coach said a couple of things in the media. A lot of guys should have a little bit more heightened urgency. So you go down to zero to 10 to a team like the Browns. We don't expect, we don't think that they're better than the Ravens. So we're like, hey, first drive, they went down there and scored. Okay, we missed a couple of throws. If I miss you, hey, I missed a couple of throws. You know, uh, Brock Byers, he dropped the pass. Then we got back behind the chains because we had a holding penalty, I think, right after. So you're like, hey, guys, we're right there. Let's calm it down. We can come back and we can beat these guys. We're only down 10. It's not that bad. And it's early in the game. And I think that was probably the message that Coach uh, basically was trying to relay to his players. Like, hey. This is not nothing that we haven't seen before. The we can beat this team. Just stay focused, keep chugging along. And I think you you saw that a little bit with the offense and the fact that they were still running the ball. They never abandoned what they want to do as far as showcasing what their identity is. And AP's been talking about that a lot. I know we'll hop into that AP, but from what I saw was they were calm, cool, and collected, and they stayed to their uh, game plan. And it worked out. And, and I'm glad you brought up the, the fact that they were able to stick to the run game. They were able to commit to the run game, Bryce. If we look at the numbers today, Raiders run the ball 29 times for 152 yards. Flip to the offensive, or excuse me, the, the passing attack, 24 attempts for 130. And, and look, this to me, Bryce, was the first game about, you know, four weeks in now where we saw this is the formula that the Raiders want to operate with, right? Like, it was no secret, and, and you and I talked about this during the offseason, we certainly talked about it the other week, where it was like, look, the Raiders aren't trying to trick anyone, right? They want to run the ball first. That is what Antonio Pierce and Luke Getze want to do. They want to run the ball first. They want to control the line of scrimmage. They want to get Brock Bowers, their incredibly talented tight end, who we are going to talk about, I promise. They want to get him involved. They don't want Minshew to turn the football over, but it's all going to start with the run game. And through three games, even in a win, they weren't able to run the ball. Well, today... They were able to do that, and we saw, Bryce, firsthand just how effective a run game can be for everything else on this Raiders offense. Yeah, um, I, I have it down in my notes plenty of times. The offense looked like they were in rhythm. It never really seemed like the offense was in a panic mode. Even Minshew, okay, 14 for 24, not the craziest Gotti numbers, 130 yards, but even when the team was rolling second, third, fourth quarter when they were actually getting the ball, 
like Minshew looked real good. He was making his throws. He was getting it out of his hands early. He was getting it to number 11. He was getting it to his guys. So, I mean, from what I saw today, we can cap, we can get better. We can build on that. That's a great foundation. We can build on that towards, you know, October, in October, November, December. Then we can start seeing that heighten a little bit. The passing stats get a little bit better. And the running game just continues to break those explosive runs. And the offense would be tough to stop. I think for me, the most impressive thing about, yes, the one the 152 was awesome. So good to see. And I, let me just pull up my stat real quick. Uh, the last time the Raiders had that uh, many rushing yards in a game. Sorry, so they, they had the mo- this is the most rushing yards they've had since week 14 of 2022. They had 165 rushing yards against the L.A. Rams. But, like, I think when you look at the number 152, it's a great number. You know, by and large, if you're running the ball that effectively, you're going to find success on the ground, which is exactly what the Raiders did. But, Duffel, they did it with two rookies making their first career NFL starts. DJ Glaze gets the rod at, or excuse me, the uh, the nod at right tackle because Thayer Mumford goes down, uh, and then we heard going into this week about all these changes, right, that AP was going to make, and one of the big ones was Jackson, excuse me, Jackson Powers Johnson goes in at left guard and then kind of bulks up the interior of that line. Just from again, from a dude who's who's played a lot more NFL football than I certainly have, Bryce. Like, how challenging is it to keep an offense in rhythm, particularly on the ground, with two rookies making their first career starts? Well, you know what I'll say, EP. I think when you when you're running the ball, you got new offensive linemen, it's easier for them, right? That's mm-hmm. what they're bred for. They're big boys. They want to get nasty. They want to make contact. They want to go forward. They don't want to go backwards. And so I think, you know, obviously I haven't coached in the league, but the coaches did a great job this week getting those guys prepared, knowing what they wanted to do. And they went out there and did it. I mean, we were watching the game together. And those guys were opening up holes, man. And they were they were looking nasty. I know um uh what's 58's name? I'm sorry, Johnson. Oh, Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah, Jackson Powers Johnson. He had a couple, he had a couple of, of penalties, but we don't care about that. That's okay because you know he's going out there giving 110% effort and he's putting his best foot forward. And that's what we saw all day today. And I know that AP and the rest of the offensive staff is going to be happy knowing that they can build with that five out there going on you know on the oh, dang going forward on these Sundays. Yeah, and I think too Bryce like again to kind of like zoom out because I want to talk about what happened after the the Raiders went down 10 nothing. But like when we zoom out, right? Like this felt to me like a very like Raiders capital R type of win, right? It it was gritty, it was nasty. Like there wasn't anything really flashy or showy about it. But I think to to take it one step even further, we talked about at the top the Raiders had every excuse not to win this game. Devontae Adams is out. Max Crosby is out. Michael Mayer is out. Marcus Epps, who has quietly been one of the best defensive players on this team since he joined the uh, Silver and Black a year ago, is done, is out. Divine Diablo is out. Like All of a sudden, you're looking at this, and this team is down at least six starters, dep- seven, depending on, on kind of how you want to categorize things. And there's every excuse, Bryce, coming off of a bad effort a week ago to say, hey, man, like, we're down Max, we're down Devontae, hey, we're, let's, we'll get him again next week. But that is not what the Raiders did. They were, you know, they, they fought, they were gritty. And I think this is everything, like, if you were to take AP, everything that he wants to be about and smush it together, that's the kind of win this was. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, football's all, always been about next man up. You know, there's not a guy on any roster that's not starting or second on the depth chart or third on the depth chart that is not excited for the opportunity to be able to go out and get a start or gain more reps during a game. And that's what we saw today. Jacoby Myers stepped up. Tucker stepped up. Turner got a touchdown. You know, Snowden was making big plays, especially towards the end of the game, Mm -hmm. right? So those guys have been waiting for that opportunity to say, hey, like, Fans, I can do it too. I can ball out too. Give them the opportunity. I can ball out too. Yes, those guys ahead of me are great. Devontae Adams, first ballot. Max Crosby's gonna be first ballot as well. But I can ball out too. So they're not here. They're not here today. I'm gonna show you that I can ball out. I'm gonna make a name for myself. And all those guys did that today, man. It was fantastic to watch. And and I think that's the most important part, right? Because AP was saying, like, look, I don't need Charles Snowden or Christian or or Janaris Robinson or Tyree, like, I don't need them to be max, right? Like, we're not going to fix that. We're not going to replicate that. 
He's like, I just need them to be them and be contributors on this defense. And that is what we saw across the board. But I, I think, Bryce, like, what was so interesting for me when we kind of go through the, the ups and downs of this game, right? Raiders go down 10 nothing. We talked about the, their ability to kind of claw out of that hole. They rattle off 20 straight, right? Yeah. 20 straight points. Uh, the Browns make it interesting towards the end. Uh, you know, the Zamir White fumble, they, they find the end zone there. And all of a sudden, we're looking at a four-point game uh, after the missed PAT. But I, I think for me, like, the ability to not only come back, right, to score the 20 unanswered, everything is going good, Allegiance jump in, right, everyone's having a great time. But then to kind of settle down, right, after getting punched in the mouth a little bit with that with that turnover, and to kind of regroup, resettle, I think to me, again, not to like blow this out of proportion, but that to me, that response when it when it wasn't great towards the end of that game in the fourth quarter, and then you have the big fourth down stop on fourth and three of Charleston, like that to me almost tells me more about the makeup of this team than maybe the 20 unanswered did. Yeah, for sure. I mean, dude, like even with the Amari Cooper touchdown that yeah. I call back. Yeah, great that point. That could be dash. Right. That could be gashing for you. Cause like now you can be like, oh shoot, like they're literally want to play away from us going down again with not that limited time left in the game. And they still came back and stopped them. They had to punt the ball off from there. So, like, yes, there was a lot of character building moments. Uh, we saw it in the pressure after the game. The first drive, they had three for three on um, third down complete uh percentage, and then the rest of the game, they didn't get another third down. So that just shows you right then and there, man, like this team fought, they stayed together. Um, obviously, you know, when you're watching the TV copy, you don't get much of what's going on, on on the sideline. But I think we got a good feel about how that sideline is with what we saw from Max Crosby to Gardner Minshew in the Ravens game a couple of weeks ago. And I'm pretty sure that's how everybody on that team is, man. Always optimistic knowing that we can grind and get these wins and knowing that nasty wins like that is our makeup. Mm -hmm. So when you have a team that like you have a coach, you listen to the way he's talking, you know, that's what they're preaching in those meetings. Let's get nasty wins. It doesn't matter how they look. It doesn't have to be gaudy numbers. As long as we can get that win, that's what we live by. And you can tell by the way that they play, especially, I mean, this, the first four games, you can tell that that's the way that they're playing, and that's what they're thinking. You know, mentality-wise, I have nothing but great things to say about it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to you know come out of a game like today, and you know, obviously, there's there's things to clean up, right? I, I think that maybe the consistency of the pass rush is something that we would like to see be a little bit better. Uh, you know, obviously, having Max Crosby helps immensely in that. Uh, but there were a lot of times where it felt like uh, Deshaun Watson did have kind of time to to dissect and, and do what he needed to do. But again, his numbers, really, at the end of the day, Duffel, really not that impressive either. Deshaun finishes 24 of 32 for 176, uh, a touchdown and an interception. But as our resident wide receiver, I had to bring this stat up for you. I'd love to get your two cents on it. This is the first time in franchise history that the Raiders have had two wide receivers record a rushing touchdown in the same game. Uh, and, of course, we're talking about DJ Turner and Trey Tucker. The last team to have multiple wide receivers score a touchdown, a rushing touchdown, in the same game. You got a guess for me? Um, My guess would have been – let me think who we had. No, no, so this isn't the Raiders. It's not the Raiders. It's a different team. Oh. Period. The Raiders the Raiders have never done it until today. And the last team to do it was this team. And I'll give you a clue. The last team to do it, so the last team to have multiple wide receivers score a rushing touchdown in a single game, 2010. Who was it? What, 2010? Who was out there in 2010? You weren't in the league yet at that point, were you? I wasn't in the league. I was in college. Yeah. But, I mean, my guess... I, I, I will, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just throw it out there. Throw I'm going to say like Miami Dolphins because they oh. were running the wild. So right. Just throw it right division. It was the New York Jets in 2010. Brad Smith and Jericho Cotri both had rushing touchdowns in the same game. As crazy as that sounds. But so like, let's, let's do this here though. Like, let's just talk about the fact that, you know, both those guys with the silver and black got involved in the rushing game, right? As a wide receiver, Right. And, and we've been really honest about this, really, from jump. Like, 
the way that the Raiders offense is built, the way that they want to do things, the way that Luke Getzey wants to, to kind of rock and roll, like we're not going to see a lot of like five wide, like ultra creative, you know, you know, hey, we're, we're doing this, that and the other. Right. So as a receiver, like how nice is it for you to be able to get involved in this way in the rushing game? Right. It, it might not look traditional per se, but like as a dude, as, as, a, as a playmaker, right, as long as you get the ball in your hands, you're probably going to be pretty happy. Right. Yeah, like you said it, you said it, EP. Like, I want the ball in my hands, right? If I if I'm getting four to five carries and you know three to five catches, hey, I'm getting the ball in my hands. It's all purpose. It's all purpose yards. You're not you're not really worried about how you're getting them. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you want to win games, right? So if the coaches are asking you to do certain things, your teammates are asking you to do certain things, you're going to want to do them if the objective is winning the game. So. You know, they have a lot of speed at receiver. We got a lot of talent at receiver, especially toting the ball and, you know, Tucker and, and Turner. So, and you saw Bowers got a jet. That's right. Too, right. That's right. You want to get your best players, um, the balls in their hands and just get it there quick and let them do what they do. And like today we saw today, they made plays with it. And I'm not mad with, I'm not mad about it. At and, all. and I'm, and I'm glad you brought up Brock Bowers real quick because like this dude, you, I mean, you look at the numbers for today. I mean, not, you know, we talk about not having gaudy numbers. He goes two receptions for 19 yards and then uh, gets one carry as well for 12 yards. But like, for lack of a better term, Bryce, like when you watch this dude play football, like he just looks like he's on his way to being an above average, really, really good tight end. Like when you kind of watch him now as we approach the quarter mark of the season, I mean, what kind of stands out to you from the young fellow from Georgia? I mean, do like, so I've met him before. So I've seen his size. He's not super big. Right? No. Like he's not a guy that you're like walking by and go like, oh, snap. Like he's not like a Tony Gonzalez type or a Travis Kelsey type guy where it's like, yeah, like he's six five, like two fifty five, and like you know he's a you know he's daunting. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. He's probably like six four, and he looks he looks like he weighs maybe two thirty five, two forty. Looks, but man, dude is a football player. I don't know what was going on up in Napa at the time where he was born, but that dude is a straight baller. Like I mean, I mean he can catch the ball. He can run with the ball in his hands. Like he has speed that's kind of hybridish, man. Like he runs like he runs like a receiver. Like he doesn't really look like a tight end. Like he has a good stride. Um, you know, he can run with the ball in his hand. He has good feel for that as well. I'm, I'm sure he's blocking very well. At me as a receiver, I'm watching the routes. I'm not watching his blocking as much per se. Um, but I'm sure he's getting nasty in the run game as well. And I mean, dude's gonna be a baller, especially in this offense where we are not looking for the, the super huge play and the big shots that often. That guy's going to be in between the hashes, in between the numbers a lot. Those are easy completions for a quarterback like Gardner Minshew. So he's going to be a guy that he's going to be called upon plenty of times this season. And he's been doing it so far. And he made big plays today as well. 100%. Let, let me ask you this, right? Make me a little bit smarter here, Bryce, where we've heard on the broadcast really, you know, for the past four weeks, we've heard from AP, we've heard from Minshew, we've heard from all these guys that one of the best things that Brock has going for him is he just has this sense of kind of the soft spots in the defense, right? Like when he, when you're Brock, right, when you get to the line of scrimmage, wherever you line up, because I think Luke Essie's done a phenomenal job of putting him in all these different places, right? Like how do you kind of learn that skill of finding kind of where those little bubbles are for you to go be productive? It's, it's all Phil. It's all practice mm. and repetition. Um, obviously, when you go out and train – um, you know, when you're getting coached to run routes, it's always think man, react to zone, right? Um, so a guy like him, that's a lot of times he's running across the field. He's running basic crosses. He's running drive routes. He's running, you know, maybe some choices, some options in the middle of the field. You see what's going on. You see the coverage. You see the safeties moving back. You see the linebacker going over here in the hook zone. So a lot of those routes that he's going to run, there's going to be times where he can say, hey, there's no need for me to run full speed over there. I can slow down a little bit, keep this window open for as long as possible. And if Gardner can hit me in it now, as soon as I can catch it, now I can turn up and get nasty. Right. Um, just the same way running a stick route versus man versus zone. If you're running a stick route, you got that cover two corner out there. There's no need to run out there full speed. Like I can, I can, I can come out of it on, 
uh, detached from the inside linebacker, but I'm not going to run into that corner, right? So it, it comes with obviously seeing it in the classroom, being smart enough to know what coverages are out there, what the defenses want to do to make you react a certain type of way. And man, like obviously him being at Georgia, those guys coached him up well because he's coming into the league and he's making it look like he's still in college, If I, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, dude, this is a guy who was immensely productive throughout his entire college career, right? Was, was the best tight end in college for two seasons uh, of his time at Georgia. But I think what would be interesting too, Bryce, is like, look, obviously no Devontae today. Uh, we're going to kind of have to wait and see what the next week looks like for him to see if he's ready to rock uh, against now a, a, a really interesting, intriguing Denver Broncos team. But like for me, I think what would be really interesting, regardless of whether we get 17 on Sunday or not, is kind of seeing how defenses adjust to Brock, right? Because Brock is, is really, through the first month of the season, shown like, hey, I'm 100% capable of being that dude. So how they adjust to him, but then kind of the chess match of how he adjusts to that adjustment, right? Because I think a lot of us, myself included, right? Like I will raise my hand and say, I forget sometimes that this is a dude who has played four NFL games, right? So I think yeah. I don't want to say like temper expectations, but it'll be really interesting to me kind of see to see how he develops from like a week four to like a week 11, just in terms of the mental side of things. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think to piggyback on what you said and then take it, you know, another step further, I think the biggest thing, Eddie, moving forward is going to be if Devontae is not out there, continuing to be able to run the offense the way you run to run the mm. offense. And then those other guys that aren't Brock Bowers, because we know Brock Bowers is going to get most of the focus from the uh, defensive coordinators, the opposing defensive coordinators. We know that's going to happen. So it's going to be, how can Gardner, how can we get Tucker involved? How we, how can we get DJ Turner involved? How can we get Jacoby Myers involved? And how can those guys make the plays when their number is called? And that is what, and in my opinion, is what's going to propel the offense. Because if we play, if we play like a Bill Belichick style defensive coordinator, where they're going to say, "Hey, you don't got 17, you only you got 89, you got Brock Bowers, we're going to take him away. You're going to have to beat us with these other guys." That's what's going to be very pertinent for our offense moving forward. Can we beat teams like we did today, Eddie? Can we beat teams with our other guys that aren't on the scouting report as? big factors in the game. Yeah, and I think right like we have talked it a lot of uh, talked a lot about it in the building as you know really over the past, you know, I guess week or not less than a week and a half about uh, you know 3 4 days since we kind of found out it was going to be uh the Raiders Sands, Max Crosby, Devontae and all these other guys like you need to be like the good teams in the NFL, Bryce, and I know I'm preaching the choir. Don't have the luxury of being good 1 through 22 on the roster. You got to be good and deep from 1 to 53. And then feel good about some of the guys on your practice squad, too, because we see it every single year. Guys are going to get called up, and not only are guys going to get called up, but they're going to be asked to contribute. And I think a perfect example of that is Isaiah Polamau, right? Marcus Epps uh, was your starting starting safety for, I mean, really since week one of last year and has quietly done an incredible job. Well, Isaiah now thrown into the fire. Uh, AP talked about how confident he was in him. Patrick Graham talked about how confident he, he was in him. And we see it, right? We see that depth, the importance of that depth, you know, literally day one. So like I said, you know, for the good NFL teams, you can't just be good one from, you know, one to 22, one to 25. You, you got to be able to go one to 53. But Duffel, again, let us zoom out a little bit, right? Because we now go uh, to week five. Your Raiders are sitting at two and two. And I think if you were a fan of the silver and black when the schedule came out, and we do this, you know, we all play this game, right? You go down the schedule, win, loss, win, loss. I think most fans would have felt pretty good at 2-2 two and two as we hit the quarter mark. Now, the two games that the Raiders ultimately won, probably not the two that we would have picked a month ago or two months ago, but all the same, 2-2 two and two at 500 in the mix headed to Denver, Right. And I think perhaps most importantly, and we talked about this, Bryce, they're two and two, and it feels like they found their identity a little bit. So for, for them to kind of ride this positive momentum, right, to, to kind of enjoy these 24 hours, like AP says, and then, hey, we're on to the Broncos. Like, what does this team need to do to kind of harness and, and kind of capsule everything from today and now take it and, and ship it off to Denver? One word, dog, one word is consistency. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, what we want to do and let's keep doing it. And that starts 
it starts on whenever they go back to work, Tuesday or Monday or whatever, Wednesday, however they go back to work, it starts right then and there. Re resetting, refocusing on the new objective, new opponent. And next week is going to be Denver Broncos. And I think it's going to be a big battle, like a, a big scheme coaching battle. You know what I'm saying? Sean Payton's a great coach. He's done it a lot. Um, and, you know, he's going to have his tricks up his sleeves and trying to get his guy going because, you know, your Oregon guy, your mm -hmm. Oregon Ducks playing oh, yeah. back over there. He's going to try to make it easy. They got to win a big win today, I think, against the Steelers. Jets. Um, they, Jets. They won, uh, they won on the road it, in, it in New York. It was a muddy yeah. win. I'm sorry. Yep. It was a muddy win. It was the muddy one. Yep. Wet. It was wet. They missed field goals, whatever, whatever. They got a W. So they're going to come in a little bit on their high horse as well. And we just got to make sure we keep hitting them in the mouth. Because I think our football team is a hit them in the mouth football team. And if we can stay consistent on that and just don't try to do too much, we're going to be a really good football team, man. A team that people have to respect come November, December. Yeah, big time. And I think you said you hit the nail on the head, man. It's consistency. And AP has talked about it literally from the jump. He's like, we got to stop riding the roller coaster, right? We can't have these high highs and these low lows. You know, we got to be right in the middle. We got to stop riding the roller coaster. Uh, and it's funny, though, as we sit here a quarter of the way through the season, there have been high highs. There have been low lows. But the Raiders are 2-2 two and two in the thick of everything now, headed to Denver uh, next week and for a big one uh, against the Broncos team that has won two games in a row. Well, Duffel, uh, I, first off, and perhaps most importantly, I'm so excited to see you in person in a few weeks, right? You get the week off next week, and then we're going to see you. We're going to see you here in the building in this very chair to my right or my left. I don't know how we're going to figure it out just yet. But you will be here for the Steelers game, which is just electric, and I cannot wait for that. But in the meantime... I know you got a lot of things cooking. I know you're, pre you know, you're you're crushing the content game. So what do we, uh, what do the folks need to be uh, keeping an eye out for between now and then? Keep an eye out on all things Sports Illustrated. I've been doing a lot of work with them this year. We got some feature shows that we got coming. They're not out yet, but they will be coming out in the months to come. I'm excited about that. And then you can just stay online on my all my social handles at Bryce underscore Butler. That's Bryce with an I, like Rice underscore butler and we'll be there for you baby that's right and dude it was again like what a, an important win like i don't want to kind of put too much stock in, into one uh, one of 17 but this felt like one that the raiders had to have they got it somehow some way without their biggest dogs on the yard and uh, today is a good day to be a raiders fan and i guarantee you everyone will be enjoying a victory monday tomorrow so for eddie pascal my guy bryce butler and everyone else at silver and black productions Enjoy the aforementioned Victory Monday tomorrow, and we will see you guys next week for the fifth quarter presented by Twitch.